Hey everyone, Fluff from Off to Lens here. Over the past six years or so, I've been collecting and filming with vintage lenses that I use for both documentary and personal content. So in this video, I wanted to discuss why I think that as filmmakers, it is a good idea to invest in vintage glass and the reasons that made me do it. I will also touch on the differences between the ones that I own and why I pick them. Hopefully this gives you a little more info if you're already looking into getting some vintage glass or a bit of motivation and inspiration to start diving into it. Before I start, don't forget to subscribe to see more videos like this one and let's get into it. This video is sponsored by Film Convert. I think as people we are always attracted to old stuff. Whether it be cameras, accessories or clothes, we love old cars and vinyls. We are always yearning for the past and older generations. This is why more and more people nowadays shoot 35mm stills or go back to even using disposable cameras. Retro is trendy. I still have my PlayStation and my Game Boy for example, and we have quite a few old books at home. Social media also has a huge impact with the use of vintage filters or songs and with the way the younger generation present themselves. When it comes to filmmaking, we see some of the best filmmakers today still shooting films like Nolan and Hoyte, which in turn inspire people to do the same or to learn how to do it. And even DPs like Greg Fraser, that can have access to every single lens they want in the world, still choose to use rehouse vintage Soviet lenses. At a more relatable level, brands like DZO Film, for example, create new cine lenses with a touch of vintage. But now I want to talk about my personal history with vintage glass and the reasoning behind it. Also, I will try to list as much of the gear in the description below. I've always been interested in old cameras and lenses, and my mom and dad always had one around growing up, so I ended up keeping them and I still have some today. I bought my first vintage lenses for photography back in 2018. They were the Canon FDs. I used them and still use them on my Canon AE1 program. But soon after, I started using them to film on my BMPCC 4K. It was the first time that I was using old lenses on a new digital camera. The year after, I decided that I wanted to build a set of vintage glass, and after doing some research, I opted for the contact Zeiss which I love. Since then, I've used them on and off for different projects, both personal and commercial. The 28mm is one of my favorite lenses. Over the following years, as my YouTube channel grew, I got to test and use a lot of lenses, and more specifically, cinema lenses. From super 35 ones to full frame and even anamorphic. And of course, I feel very fortunate that I'm able to have access to such amazing and diverse lenses, but I also made me stop looking into older glass. Recently, after watching movies like Dune Part 2 and The Batman, like a lot of filmmakers around the world, I spent a bit of time diving into the behind the scenes, and of course, the Soviet lenses became once again a trendy topic, especially the Helios 44 II. I have always been of course aware of this lens, but the reason that I never got it is that since I used primarily Super 35 sensor cameras, I knew the focal length wasn't right for me. Now that I use a Blackmagic Cinema Camera 6K that is full frame and shoots open gate in a 3x2 aspect ratio, it changes things for me. So I decided to finally get the Helios. I got lucky and found a mint condition not far from where I live in France, and since it was only 95 euros, I got it, and I'm really glad I did. As soon as I put the lens on a 6K full frame, I fell in love with the look and the image. I knew it would be special, but I didn't expect to like the look as much. I've said it recently, but I think it is my new favorite lens. I like it so much that I decided to also get the Mir 37mm in order to have at least two Soviet lenses if I needed to shoot a project on them. Stay in touch as I might also do a short test footage video of the Mir 37mm. So today, these are all the vintage glass that I own, and I don't intend to sell them anytime soon. Which brings me to the core of this video, why invest in vintage lenses? But before we get into it, here's a quick word about today's sponsor, Film Convert. I have been using Film Convert for so many years now for pretty much all of my work, from documentaries to travel and personal content. Film Convert enables you to add film color and grain to your videos. They have a selection of film stocks to choose from, and they've also added cine on log version so you can actually dial the contrast and saturation of the stocks. You also have real film grain, and they also now even have a halation add-on. I love the look of film, and using film stocks and real grain is a great way to find that aesthetic with digital cameras. This is also a nod to the past in some ways. And even though all my projects are very different in terms of location, atmosphere and subject, they still have that same organic feel and aesthetic, whether I'm filming landscapes or people, or if I use cine or vintage glass. 
All the footage you have seen in this video was graded using Film Convert, including the latest Helios one. Using film emulation for footage shot with a vintage lens made even more sense to me and it really suited the distinct look of the lens. For this particular video and for most of my work, I used the stock KD5207. Here's a quick before and after. If you want to know more, I made a dedicated video where I discuss my color grading process so feel free to watch it. And don't forget to check out the link in the description to get 10% off. Since we are talking about investing, I want to first touch on price. Vintage lenses are usually very affordable, especially when compared to modern cineglass, unless of course they are extremely rare or special. The second reason is that they hold their value very well and might actually gain value in the years to come. So they are worth keeping and even if you decided to get rid of them, it would most likely be for the same amount of money or slightly more. Now let's get into the creative part. Vintage lenses usually have a look. They have loads of character, that can be flares or bokeh for example. They are not what you would call clean or clinical. Take the Helios for example. This lens is a perfect illustration of a distinct look. You either love it or you don't. It would be hard to stay impartial to it. Which brings me to my next point. Using vintage lenses gives you a point of difference. What I mean by that is that it is obviously and noticeably different from modern cine or stills lenses. You get a different look, but you also get a different feel and on set it adds another layer of uniqueness to the setup and of course the images. Another important factor in terms of creativity and why vintage lenses are a good investment for filmmakers is that most of them will cover full frame sensors and therefore will work with a wider range of cameras and sensors which in turn makes them appealing to own. Because of their characters or quirks, shooting with vintage lenses is a great and interesting experience. They might require more work to get going, but they are worth it in my opinion. The focus throw, for example, is usually much nicer than standard stills lenses and as long, comfortable and precise as cine glass. Using vintage glass also boosts creativity in my opinion, and you might end up shooting in a different way than you normally would with more standard lenses. This can be because you are hunting for flares or shooting wide open to get a certain bokeh, or just because the focal length might require you to approach things differently. Now, aside from the financial and creative aspects, there are also other factors to consider when investing in vintage lenses. A huge part of investing in vintage glass is the hunt. You will most likely spend hours or days researching and weeks or months finding them. This is both fun and addictive. Sometimes you might get lucky, like I did with my Helios, and it only took half an hour to find the correct lens, but sometimes it will take a lot longer, and for example, it took me more than a year to get all the lenses that I wanted for my Zeiss kit. One of the most appealing aspects in vintage glass in my opinion is that these lenses are unique and that they won't make them anymore. The serial numbers for example become a bigger part of the lens's characteristic than it would in a modern lens. It's crazy to think that for example my Helios is 51 years old. I love that it has been on this planet for longer than myself and I love to think about the cameras it has been used on and where and by how many people. One of the biggest reasons to invest in vintage glass is that as filmmakers, we basically have three levels that we can get and use these lenses in. We can shoot with them as they are, just with the right adapter, but we can also mod them, which means changing the mount, adding gearing, getting a larger front thread, and even declicking the aperture. And of course, we can also get them rehoused to essentially get all the functionalities of a modern cinema lens, while still keeping what made that particular lens special in the first place. Iron glass lenses are a great example of this. I also wanted to touch briefly on what makes the lenses that I personally own different from one another. To summarize, I feel like the Canon FDs are a good entry point. They are cheap, easy to find, and still give you that vintage look. But the ones that I have, for example, aren't the best build quality compared to the other glass. My contact Zeiss are the workhorse. Solid, great to use, with a beautiful image that is still neutral enough to use on most projects, but they're also more expensive and slightly harder to find than the Canons. Then we have the Soviet ones. For these lenses, character is key. In my opinion, they are to be used when you need to have a very distinct look. You get loads of flares and that crazy swirly bokeh, which is amazing of course, but not usable on all projects. They also happen to be very well made and cheap to buy. I don't think there is one better than the other, it just comes down to budget, availability, the look needed, and of course, your type of work. As with all filmmaking gear, once again, it depends on the reasons that you need to get vintage lenses. 
Are they for work? How many can you afford? And of course, they also need to fit your type of work. Personally, I mostly do short documentaries, personal and outdoor content, and I usually have control over the style and creative process of the piece. There's also a risk in buying vintage lenses. You can have mold, fungus, haze, and a bunch of other problems that modern lenses won't have. But as I said, it is a fun process to hunt for them, and they can become a very important part of a filmmaker's kit with a beautiful look and relatively affordable price. That's it for me for today guys, hopefully you've enjoyed this video. Feel free to also share your experience with vintage lenses in the comments below. And as always, thanks for watching, don't forget to subscribe, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye. Also feel free to check out my two ebooks, Freelance Documentary Filmmaking and Travel Cinematography, where you can find a streamlined but comprehensive overview from pre-production all the way to marketing, built on years of my own experience shooting short documentaries and travel videos around the world. And if you are interested, I'm also doing filmmaking mentoring sessions when you can ask me anything about a wide variety of topics.